So it's been seven months since I bought my Dyson V11 torque drive. I put out a couple of videos back then where I went over the specs and features and did a lot of tests with the V11, and I'll link those videos in the description. But in this video, I wanna go over all the good and bad things that I've noticed while using my Dyson V11 this year. I'm also gonna dig deep into the online reviews of the V11 to see what kinds of issues or problems other consumers have had with it, if any. So links in the description for current prices, and let's get started. First, I should say that while it's true that I own quite a bit more cordless vacuums than the average person, I would say that I probably use the Dyson V11 more than any of them, especially around the Vacuum War studio, but also at home. Starting off with the good stuff first, I would say that the Dyson V11 is still the most powerful cordless vacuum on the market, at least that I know of. It has both more airflow and suction power than any I've tested, and by quite a lot. It has multiple power settings, so if you need to deep clean a rug or clean up a big mess, for example, you could put it in high power for that, or use it in low or medium power to save battery life. Also, after seven months, the Dyson V11 is still the best cordless at deep cleaning carpets that I've personally tested. That is getting the deep deep down embedded dirt in carpets. Cordless vacuums on average don't have as much power as corded vacuums do, so deep cleaning carpets especially is usually a weakness for cordless vacuums, but not with the Dyson V11. The battery technology on the V11 is really advanced. Not only have I found the battery on the V11 to be the longest lasting on a single charge, but when you take into account the power output in airflow per minute, it's also the most efficient battery on a cordless vacuum that I know of. And when you add that to the automatic adjustment feature, which is unique to the Dyson V11, where a sensor in the cleaner head detects if you're vacuuming hard floors or carpet and then adjusts the power up or down accordingly, it makes that already amazing battery life and battery efficiency even better because it optimizes it for your home situation. This only applies to the more expensive version of the V11, the torque drive version, because it has that screen that gives you a digital readout of the remaining battery life with the current conditions. I've never seen anything like it since it came out, and I have to tell you, I really love how practical and useful it is in real world conditions. In general, it does its main job really well, which is picking stuff up off carpet and hard floors. Even on its low power setting with the adjustable front gates all the way open, this well-designed floor head really has no trouble with any size debris on carpets, though on hard floors it's a little worse with extra large debris, but it's still much better than the average cordless vacuum. I've continually found that its wide diameter brush roll resists pet hair and human hair tangles better than the average vacuum floor head. It's not perfect, it still does get tangled with longer hair, but it's definitely better than average. The bin is easy to empty, and generally speaking, debris does not get stuck in there, but it does happen if you have a lot of pet hair or you fill it all the way up. The sealed system with HEPA filtration is still free of leaks after seven months, which is not something you can always take for granted. The final pro is that it seems like a really well-built, sturdy machine that will last a long time, though there are some caveats to that that I'm going to get into now. Moving on to the cons. Now I haven't had this particular problem, but many people have reported an issue with the brush not spinning, either right when they got it or shortly after they brought it home. The issue was caused by a faulty ring on the interior of the brush roll housing on some units. Dyson is apparently aware of this flaw though and has upgraded that particular ring and sent out free cleaner heads to all the people which mentioned it in the reviews, so that seems like a good solution. I would also add that the high torque floor head on the V11 looks virtually identical to the previous model on the V10, though the newer one just seems stiffer, like the gates are harder to open and close and the brush is really hard to remove. It did get better over time though, I've noticed. Related to that, I was a little disappointed when the V11 came out and they weren't offering a V11 package that included a soft roller like they did with the V10. I've always liked the soft roller for hard floor cleaning, though I admit that having to change out the heads when you come to a patch of carpet isn't practical and I never really did it, though I would have liked to have the option with the V11. You can buy the soft roller for the V10 separately and I have confirmed that it fits the V11 and is the same wattage, so it's interchangeable with the V11 even according to Dyson. Also, you have to pay the price for the bigger bag battery as it's a pound heavier than the V10. And while the battery is on the bottom and Dyson may be the best in the business at making the handle well balanced, it's still a little heavier on the arm than people are probably expecting it to be. Though I have to say it's not as noticeable with large jobs as I was thinking it would be when I first got it. In other words, it's heavy, but it still feels better than most regular vacuum cleaners. It's kind of a silly thing, but LED lights have become super common with cordless vacuums, and I really like them and find that they're extremely useful at spotting debris on hard floors, so I do miss that feature with the V11. 
One thing I've noticed myself and saw in the reviews is that if you have the gates all the way closed and you have particularly thick or long carpet, the seal is a little too good and it becomes hard to push and can wear your arm out. You can open up the gates, which allows more air in to remedy this, but if you have almost all thick carpets in your home, I really wouldn't recommend the Dyson V11. I also don't like that the battery isn't easily replaceable like it is on other cordless vacuums. I know that James Dyson has said that his batteries can last 15 years of daily use, Use, and I haven't noticed a drop a single minute in battery expectancy in seven months, but I still would have liked the batteries to be easily replaceable. But despite those admittedly kind of nitpicky things, I have to say that although some really cool cordless vacuums have come out in the last seven months, the Dyson V11 is still the king of power, deep cleaning, and battery technology in my opinion. And if you don't mind the super high price, you're probably going to really enjoy vacuuming with the Dyson V11. Check out the links below for current prices and my reviews and tests with the V11. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to Vacuum Wars for more.